Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today we are going to be looking at our next installment of the Acturian Anthology, which, of course, is channeled information that was channeled by Tom Kenyon, who is a channel favorite over here on Esoteric Atlanta. We've gone through quite a bit of Tom Kenyon's work, and so we are looking at the Octurians now. Um, if you missed last week's episode, last week's episode, we started with the channeling of Ascended Master Sunat Kumar, who himself is an Octurian. Um, that link will be down in the description box below. You might want to start with that first. Again, if you missed last week, start with that first before continuing with this week. All right, let's see what Sunat Kumar has to say about the history of humanity. I mentioned earlier my interactions with a being named Ashura, a woman of extraordinary abilities and intelligence. These attributes we Acturians find most fascinating, as we prefer to associate with beings of a high caliber. I find that funny. Obviously, the Acturians are not woke. <laughs> They're like, if you're dumb, well, we don't want to deal with you. We're not going to deal with the dumb people. We only want to, we only want to work with the smart people. <laughs> um, same, same, buddy, same. As I said, I fell in love with this being. This was a period I noted as approximately 10 million years ago in Earth's history. This was before the ho Homo sapiens. In truth, she was a fifth dimensional being. She was experimenting with shifting into third dimension. You would call her an inferior, and I mean that as a noun, not an adjective. At this time, and previously for several tens of millions of years, there were beings in the fifth and higher dimensions who were on Earth. They were ephemeral in nature and were not negatively affected by the geological turmoil. They were experimenting with the attributes of matter, and some of them, the most adventurous, the more curious, and the mo more courageous, would shift temporarily into third dimensional forms. Now, I am somebody five years ago, if you asked me if I believed in evolution, I would have said yes, but now I don't. Um, after the Great Awakening, I don't believe that at all. And we know that darkness can't create anything, only the light can create. And if we're looking at the development of different densities, not dimensions, but densities, which is matter, which you have first, second, we're in third density right now, we do understand that like second density is animal, third density is human, fourth density, it, it goes on, right? So um, the density is the matter, the dimensional is the consciousness. And I think that is where the darkness tries to mimic and mirror the light is by creating this theory of evolution. There is an evolution of density, but it doesn't happen the way that science has explained it or fake science has explained it i should say the science that we learn in school is the fake science um it, it happened it, it's not like you, you evolve from a monkey into a human no you actually experience when you're when you're shifting from second density to third density you actually experience the body the animal body experiences a, a, what we call a death and then when it's reborn it's reborn into the body of a third density creature which would be would be a human right so I can see where the darkness is trying to mimic that evolution. So I am not, you know, they talk about homo sapiens. Like, I, I don't even like using that word because they're talking about pre-third density. And if you were around for the organic portal episode with Mr. Fox, he goes into this a little bit. I'll put that again down in the description box below if you missed that. Because he goes into kind of like what happened um, at the crossover when planet earth was able to then host third density so on planet earth right now we have first second and third density beings living here first density being plant life you know minerals all that kind of stuff second density being animal third density being human i i know we also have fourth and fifth density here as well because they're just not we just can't see them because they're all well some of us can but they're on the other side of the veil you know but as far as like dimensional, like fifth dimensional beings, um, I know the loved one speaks about this as well. And they talk about there is a majority of people on the on the um, earth right now that are called wanderers. Um, I have been told that I am a wanderer, meaning that we I was residing in like sixth density and, and volunteered to come back to third density at this time to help this timeline switch with planet earth from third to fourth density. Um, and when we go through, we did, when we agree to come back to third density, we also have to go through the veil of amnesia. So we don't know 
we don't have quite that memory of where we come from and there are different side different side effects different um symptoms of somebody who is not third density uh, you can read the law of one if you want to know all those side effects i would highly again i've said this in almost every episode i do everybody should be reading the law of one like everybody should be reading it if you want to understand what's going on right now in our world the law of one is what you need to be reading and that will also protect you that knowledge the law of one will protect you from infiltrators you'll see it clearly for what it is and therefore you will be able to ascend. So I would highly suggest that. So I, I get what, what um, Sunat Kumar is saying here. He's using very different vocabulary words than I would use or maybe the law of one of the Cassiopeians would use. But once again, we have to also, again, I've said this many times, when it comes to channeling, this is being channeled by Tom Kenyon. The information is coming through Tom Kenyon as the vessel. So Tom Kenyon himself is his own individual being with his own experiences and his own perceptions of life. So the information being given to him is being filtered through Tom Kenyon's perspective of life. And so there are going to be things that are written and seen in the way Tom Kenyon would see them and not necessarily coming from Sunat Kumar because that's just the danger of, of channeling. That's just what happens. So you always have to take everything with a grain of salt and you always have to understand it's from the perspective of the channeler, right? So there are going to be some things that are lost in translation. All right, so... They would remain in their third dimensional forms for a very short period of time and then return to their fifth dimensional state or higher. There was much discussing among the afferal regarding the positive benefits of remaining in third dimensional forms for longer periods of time. This was discussed in relation to the dangers and limitations of being in third dimensional form. As I said, Ushara and I entered into our relationship in the fifth dimension and in the fifth dimensional space, we had form. Indeed, in fifth dimensional reality, we, as do you humans, experiencing having physical bodies, but the physicality is vibrating at a faster rate than third dimensional bodies. That makes sense, right? Because you're more etheric, like if you think the way atoms move and like the density, like like third, third, third density is a very thick and heavy density, right? That's why some of us, one of the, the side effects, one of the symptoms is that your body never quite feels right in third density. Like you might have a lot of inflammation problems, digestional problems, because your, your consciousness and your energy is having a hard time really being in this thick, murky density. And planet Earth is not the only third density planet. Well, planet Earth is about to be a fourth density planet, but it's not. There are many third density planets. Planet Earth is the hardest it's like gangster planet but it's it's not the only one so this is happening across the board in all third density planets where there's a heaviness a thickness of being in this realm of of choice and that's what third density is for as we've said before third density is the density of polarity where you now have choice you have choices to make because of the friction offered by both the darkness and the light that's that opposing forces opposing forces is what calls causes the friction that is necessary for growth all right. When I, as an intergalactic being, made love with Ashura, she, after receiving my seed, lowered her vibratory rate into a third dimension to see what it would be like. And then she returned back to the fifth dimension with this child, being the merging of an Octurian and an Ephiral, who was also an Earth being. Ushura was human like in form, as were many of the Ephirmals. Yeah, humanoid. That's called a humanoid, right? So we're humanity on Earth. We're Earthlings as humanity. But all the galactic beings have a humanoid existence, meaning they have two arms, two legs, a head. It just maybe not doesn't look exactly like, like us. Like they say, the Palladians are the most like us. In fact, you could probably walk across, walk beside a Palladian on the street and never notice that they were slightly different. Um, people who have had experience with Palladians say that it's their eyes that are different. So if you really... You know, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And you can tell a lot about a person by their eyes, by what they're, the kindness, the um, the light in the eyes. There's a light behind people's eyes that are of the good. Um, you can tell a lot. And so people who have had experience with little Palladians on Earth say that when they look into their eyes, it's, it's not a human eye. It's not something that they've seen different things, right? There's a different awareness with the Palladians than with the humans. And of course, the Pleiadians are our distant cousins. So, all right. 
Here we come to a fascinating anomaly and the unseen root of your biology. We are talking here millions of years in the past before the first Homo sapiens, before the Neanderthals. See, Neander I don't believe the Neanderthals ever existed. Um, and that, again, I believe is probably Tom Kenyon's channeling because Tom Kenyon himself, as you guys are aware, is a scientist. So I think that's part of his programming, which I'm not judging that because we've all been programmed to an extent. But um, yeah, Neanderthals never existed. The ephemerals who descended into third dimensional space in reality did so, as I mentioned earlier, as an experiment. There was a certain period of time that ephemeral could remain in third dimensional space as a biological entity and still return to a higher dimension. If they went past this period, however, they would be trapped, so to speak, in the biology of the entity. That kind of matches what Mr. Fox said about the uh, organic portals in the episode we did with him with what organic portals are, how they came to be. And of course, again, that started when Earth was transferring from second density to third density. And again, that will be down in the description box below. So please check that out if you have it. At the beginning of the period of the Fermals, while there was experimenting, dropping down into fifth and into third, they knew and understood this narrow window. As they continued this experiment of dropping down from the fifth into the third over many thousands and thousands of years, some of them become became brazen and less cautious. They were adrenaline junkies. Listen, the human body might be dense and thick and hard sometimes, but there is a lot of fun you can have with a human body, right? There's a lot of things you can do in a human body that maybe you can't do in other densities. So I don't, I don't blame them. In the period prior to the Neanderthals, the Ephemerals discovered they could enter into the body of animals and experiment with perceiving the world through the biological nervous system of the animals they entered. The window still applied, however, and by this I mean the window of time they could remain safely in the third dimensional reality. Which again, Mr. Fox's episode, part two of Organic Portals, he talks about souls getting tricked and getting stuck here on planet Earth by the organic portals. Some of the ephemerals discovered an extraordinary experience in biology during their excursions into mammalian bodies. You call it sex, orgasm. The ephemerals found this most fascinating state of being. Some of them became so fascinated and intrigued that they lost touch with the reality of the time window, preferring to remain in biological form. Some of them became trapped, unable to return to the fifth dimension. And that's kind of what I meant when I said there's some fun to be had in human bodies. <laughs> Maybe I was one of those that got trapped and stuck, but that's kind of what I meant. During this entire entire time period from 10 million years ago to about 1 million years in your past, many intergalactic civilizations encountered your world. Now here the story gets very complex. You have a race of mammals, a species of mammals, you might say, that have unique differences. These differences have to do with where these pre-humans developed, which once again does match what Mr. Fox read from the Cassiopeian board. So again, please go listen to that in the description box below is the link to the episode. And while we're on this topic, let me say that part of the human tree goes back to the oceans. There were humans that developed a greater affinity to the ocean and evolved as sea creatures that breathed air, but which also had human-like features as they evolved parallel to the dolphins and the whales. Mermaids. Most of these beings are now extinct, but a few still remain in clusters to this day. You call them mermaids and mermen. Yep. They are not a mythology. They are a reality, although one that is about to pass away. We'll see. Among all the pre-humans, and we're talking about pre-Neanderthals, you had a subdivision between two different aspects of consciousness. One was pure mammalian, and a smaller number were ephemerals that had become trapped in mammalian bodies, early primates. Again, I'm not buying the whole evolutionary scale of the densities because... I'm awake. And I know Tom Kenyon is also awake, but once again, even within your awakeness, you're, you're starting to wake up, you still have programming, and Tom Kenyon himself, once again, is a scientist. So that whole evolutionary chain, chain that we've been taught, the Darwin evolution, probably is a programming that's heavily ingrained into Tom Kenyon, I would assume, I'm assuming this, um, because he's a scientist. And so it might take a while for him and, and to realize maybe that's not 
what Sunat Kumar was saying. There is the pre-Adamic, so that's what I think Sunat Kumar is referring to, like the organic portals are pre-Adamic. And when um, Earth was transferring from second density to third, these organic portals were able to kind of allure other souls into Earth. And so you had souls that got trapped here that were higher density than third density, where the organic portals themselves, who are still 50% of our human population, don't have that consciousness. They only have the lower three chakras. To clarify, in this early history, we are talking in a rage from 27 to 10 million years ago. The Ephemerals existed in the fifth dimensional reality and began to experiment with descending into third dimensional Earth reality. They were explorers of consciousness. So that does match the, the, the getting tricked to come here. Now, the ears, that, that, that's another thing where we know that this isn't really what Tom Kenyon is putting down. Is it probably what Sunat Kumar is saying? Because we know that third density cannot last for that many millions of years. It's the shortest density because it's the hardest on a planet. So yes, Earth might have been around for millions and millions of years, but the third density reality of Earth has not been that long, only a few hundred thousand years. Uh, just because people, again, through the law of one third density, it can, a planet cannot sustain third, dance, third density for very long because it's really hard on the planet. And so I, I, I would reckon that this, you know, 27 to 10 million years scenario that Tom Kenyon is channeling is probably coming again from his own confirmation bias in the Darwinism evolutionary chain, right? So again, read the law of one so you understand what I'm saying here. So if you have a better, better, um, a better understanding of different perspectives and the law of one just makes a lot of sense. Like the law of one is just, it, it's very common sense. And it, when you, once you see it, once you read it, you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. All right. Then later, after I encountered Ushura 10 million years ago, some but not all of the Furimals experimented with descending into biological realities of animals, specifically the early primates. No, that's the organic portals. Again, that's that there were no monkeys that were that were changing into humans, guys. That that didn't happen. That's a fairy tale. Then we moved forward into this interesting time of your last one million years when intergalactic civilizations became most fascinated with your planet because it had developed primate intelligence, which is a result of bi biology operating on its on its own in relationship to evolution. Nope. And in some uh, cases due to the presence of efferals in their biology, ancient, Gre Gr ancient Greece knew them as nymphs. I mean, th yeah, but... When the Galactics came down to Earth to inhabit Earth, to mate with the humanoids of Earth, again, this was not millions and millions of years ago. No. And if Tom Kenyon ever sees these videos, buddy, buddy, please read the Law of One. I think you'll get a lot of clarity. It might challenge some of your science programming, your backup programming from the Matrix, but... I think you'll you'll kind of have a better understanding. Because I get, from, from what you're reading, after studying the Law of One and the Cassiopeians and organic portals, I get what Sunat Kumar is saying here. So if I was channeling this, I would write this very differently because I have that, that lens of perspective from reading the law of one and the Cassiopeians to understand that millions, Tom Canyon, third density hasn't existed for millions and millions of years. It just hasn't happened. It can't happen. It just, it, that's not, that's not by law that cannot happen, right? Because it's too hard on the planet. Now, the Earth itself, again, has been around, yes, millions and millions of years, but it started as a first density planet where there was no, it was just trees and rocks, fungus. And then once it evolved into second density, it brought on animals. Now, those animals did not evolve from the trees, the roots, and the fungus. They came with the second density. Yeah, because usually when a planet changes density, all the life form on the planet has to die or leave the planet. That's a better way to say it, it has to exit the planet so the planet can go through its harvesting. That's what's so spectacular about what's happening here on planet Earth right now. As we go into fourth density, this is like the first time in all the cosmos that living beings have been able to ride the roller coaster of 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 that of that butterfly coming out of the cocoon of the cocoon with Earth, right? We're not having to get off the planet in order for the planet itself to evolve. So we have, again, on planet Earth right now, because we've gone through first, second, and third density stages, there are first, second, and third density beings on the planet. There's plant life, animal life, human life. We know that fourth density beings are around us. We just can't see them through the perspective lens of a third density being. 
all right once we go into fourth density the veil will be lifted and we will be able to see the higher conscious beings right like animals see us animals understand that humans are a higher a consity a, a consciousness a higher density they just in, in, inherently know right so we'll see that once we're in fourth density too so i hope that makes sense once again please read the law of one you guys you got to educate yourself on this stuff please okay Due to the geological changes that had transpired upon your planet, your planet was also rich with minerals. Yeah, that's that's minerals are first density. Approximately 400,000 years ago, an intergalactic civilization known as the Anunnaki came across your planet. 400, uh, like I probably like could say maybe 300,000 to 250,000 years ago, the Anunnaki. That was the start of the interbreeding with with the humans to make planet earth one of the most powerful planets because we carry all the genetic dna of multiple different galactic civilizations they were on a mission a mining expedition to find gold to due to the fact that their atmosphere had come degraded and their scientists had discovered that the properties of gold could help stabilize their environment this expedition team discovered that your planet was rich in gold. It possessed far more gold than it does now. Yeah, I know where they're going with this. And so they sent teams of miners, which are a combination of Anunnaki and what you call robots. Over the course of many centuries, the Anunnaki discovered to their displeasure that Earth's relationship to the sun was detrimental to them, as was the atmosphere. They looked for a solution. Being extremely clever, they noticed that some of the mammals, some of the primates, wandering around had a higher degree of intelligence than the other group. These could be trained. What they did not realize was that these particular primates chosen were trapped ephemerals. The ephemerals had a glimmer, a glimmer in their eye, noting their high states of intelligence. I literally said the eye tells you everything you need to know about a person is looking into their eyes. The Anunnaki scientists decided to crossbreed and they took certain attributes from their DNA and merged it with primates they had chosen to create a race of human beings. They were more intelligent, more autonomous, but could easily be controlled. And the adventure, shall we say, became more complex. Yes, it's true. We are a, um, we were created to be a slave planet. We know that it is true. Um, but it wasn't the primates. And, and again, once again, listen to what Mr. Fox says in part two of the organic portals, because and the Anunnaki, from my understanding, and, and I, I really want to encourage you guys to understand what bigotry is. If you are going to call a select group of people bad, just because a few of them are bad, that's you being a bigot. Every single being has free will choice. You cannot judge somebody by the color of their skin. You cannot judge somebody by their sexuality. You cannot judge somebody by their galactic origins or their blood type. That's bigotry. You have to judge people by the fruits of their actions, by their actions, by their intent, by how they live in the world. All right. That's something for some reason has become real confusing on this side of this battle so many people in our seeker community i'm not even a cause truthers because no, nobody knows the truth we're seekers so many people in our seeker community are wanting to like execute people just because they carry a particular bloodline or just because they have a last name you fucking bigot sorry to sound so blunt and crass but if that's what you believe you're a bigot you're a racist bigot Every human being has free will choice, including, including the Anunnaki. Not all of the Anunnaki were bad. How many people do we see in this community that think that the giants were bad just because they were giants? How dare you? How dare you judge a being on how they look, on how tall they are. That's no different. Hear me for those in the back that are hard of hearing. That is no different than judging somebody on the color of their skin. It's no different. Can you control how tall you are? 
No. Do you, would you, how would you feel? We know what 1% of our human populations get into. We know what they do with their religious practices. How would you feel if some other galactic group judged you based on the religious practices of the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds? It's not fair, is it? Because you're not doing that. So don't do that to anybody else. Don't judge someone unless you have seen their actions. Because every single person has free will choice. I don't know why this is so complicated for people to understand. So, Anunnaki. Just because something's an Anunnaki doesn't mean it's bad. Just like because someone's white doesn't mean they're bad or because someone's black doesn't mean they're bad. It's the action of the individual. So just want, so there were good Anunnaki. We've talked about this in the Emerald Tablets with the fall of Atlantis. There were good Anunnaki and there were bad Anunnaki, just like there are good humans and just like there are bad humans. This seems, this should have been something that you, we all learned in kindergarten. Okay. It was determined by the Anunnaki that when the mining was complete, the hybrids should be destroyed. Going against the dictum of the collective Anunnaki, a few renegade Anunnaki choose to save a few of their favorites. To the lesser primates, the Anunnaki were like gods. And the seed of religion religions began when the Anunnaki left the planet and left behind these more evolved primates to fend for themselves. They were cast from the Garden of Eden, so to speak. I have a very different perspective of the Garden of Eden. Just my research. I I don't think the Garden of Eden was good. We have to invert everything. I don't think the Garden of Eden was good. I think that the Garden of Eden was, was a jail cell. That's just my perspective now. Invert everything. Everything in the Bible is inverted anyway. So just what they say is good is bad. And what they say is bad is good. All right. After the Anunnaki left, a plethora of higher of other intergalactic civilizations interacted with these hybrids and thus intergalactic DNA was mixed into the human geological gene pool. And one thing though, I, I want to say too, again, looking at the idea of third density, no, I mean, it wasn't the Anunnaki that said, well, we're going to leave some people here. No, that was like third density. That's like what third density is. You know, there had to be humanoids here. So it wasn't up to the Anunnaki. It was just the evolution of planet earth. This is why I say that humanity is intergalactic royalty. Altogether, you have been affected by between 23 and 24 different alien civilizations. As so, so you, as a modern human, possesses in the deeper stratus of your unconscious memory two important streams of knowledge. But the difficulty with the unconscious knowledge is that it generates conscious actions without understanding. It's what we work a lot with in yoga, right? That's why we do shadow work. The two streams that I speak to here are the Infernals within you. In your prehistory, the Infernals became trapped. So there is a deep feeling of being trapped in matter and yearning to go home, but an inability to do so. That's That resonates. This entrapment, by the way, was a result of the force of gravity, for as your ancestors, the Ephermals, descended from the fifth into the third, their light bodies took on mass. And when something has mass, it is affected by gravity. So in your deep collective unconscious, there is a feeling of having falling into matter, a yearning to return home, and no way to do so. Yeah, that resonates. The second stream has to do with your genetic manipulation conducted by the Anunnaki to make you a slave race. And therefore, in your deep conscious, there is a yearning to be in the right relationship to the gods and a tendency to become subservient and to worship because you do not understand the true reality or nature of the beings you deem to be higher than yourself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this in this book before, and that is why, so we talk about the Kentuckians came 
the uh, Draco brought the Kentuckians to Earth as well. The Kentuckians were a positively oriented planet. That's where we get the Celtics. That's what I talked about with the Boudicca episode, which again, I'll place that in the description box below if you missed it. This idea of Celtic comes from the planet Kentucky, not Kentucky again. I don't want anybody saying, oh, I'm from Kentucky. I'm not saying Kentucky. I'm saying Kentucky. Kanteka. It's a planet constellation, right? They were dropped off here on Earth through the portal in Kiev, according to the Cassiopeians. And that is, again, where we get our Celtic, our Druid culture from. The Kentuckians looked a lot like Palladians and Lyrans. They were the blonde, all, very Nordic-looking, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, red hair, green eyes. Think about river dance, all these different cultures that come from Celtic practices. That was Kenteca. Now, the Draco, when they destroyed the Kenteca planet, they brought the Kentuckians here to Earth so that they could be harvested in slavery. And that is fourth density negative. So that's where we see the battle between planet Earth ascending to either fourth density positive or fourth density negative. So they're playing on this genetic manipulation of wanting to do good and be, and be um, a subservient. Um, to get you to fall in line for the new world order, which is fourth and stay negative. So once again, to go forth and say, you know, people talk about the Schumann residence. They send me pictures of the Schumann. I'm like, I know, I know. I don't need to see pictures of the Schumann residence. I know Earth's ascending. But what people are not understanding, and again, I want you to really listen when I say this, what people are not understanding is that to go forth density negative is also an ascension going both positive or negative are considered is considered the earth ascending to fourth density but once you get to fourth density you're not in polarity anymore so it's got to go one way or go the other way. So what these motherfucker infiltrators are trying to do is they're sending you the Schumann residence so that you relax in your laurels. Oh, it's all good. We're ascending. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Of course we're ascending. We're going to fourth density. We just don't know yet if it's going to be negative or positive. And guess what? It's up to us whether we go negative or positive. So get up off your ass. Do your shadow work. Stop following these infiltrators. Any Anybody that tells you, oh, relax, it's fine. The white hat's got it. That's an infiltrator. Boom, right there. You are the white hat. And if you just sit there lazily and just let things happen, you're just going to let the new world order walk in right through your very own front door. And the next thing you know, by your actions, you have consented to fourth density negative. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. So get off your ass, work on yourself, heal yourself, take your power back. Stops, you know, we get so frustrated with our friends and family who sit around and watch mainstream media all day. Well, what are you doing? Are you sitting around and watching YouTube all day? Because that's the same thing. It's the same, same Project Mockingbird. It's the same mind control. It's two sides of the same coin. Turn me off. Turn others off and go get within your own power. Find your own power. Don't be manipulated. If you find yourself following a truther and doing everything this truther tells you to do, that's you being subservient to slavery. That's you taking a knee to the controllers. Wake up. The choice is yours. Collectively, we have to make a conscious choice. That's again what third density means, right? It's the planet of choice. Are we choosing to be slaves? Are we choosing to be sovereign free people helping each other out? If you sit around all day and you watch YouTubes about which, which celebrity is really alive and which celebrity is really dead and who's the good guy and who's the bad guy and who the white hat's this and the white hat's that, you are consenting to the cabal. You are consenting to be a slave. It's no different than your friends and family who sit around and watch Fox and CNN all day no different you know we so we see the other side who all got the zapper doodahs we see them as being delusional 
But we on our side are also, they're delusional because they think the zapper de doodah is going to save their lives. Well, here on our side, we're delusional because we think the white hats are going to save our lives. The only person who can save your life is you. Period. End of story. It's you. By taking your power back. I hope that makes sense. I know that's going to trigger people, but it, it, it needs to be triggered. Because if we end up going forth and sitting negative because you slackers didn't do your work, I'm going to be pissed. Okay, so again, I am telling you, turn YouTube off, go and get the Law of One, read that you can get a free PDF online of the Law of One, the raw material, read it, digest it, start doing your shadow work, start taking moments of silence each day to understand yourself, start questioning your triggers, start looking at where you're giving your power away. If you don't want to be a part of the slave planet, then you have to make that choice through your actions. It's your actions that consent. Okay. Now, after the Anunnaki manipulation of other intergalactic civilizations interacted with you, as I said, some of these wish to impart you with their qualities and some of the abilities they possess that they determined would be in your best interest. But as I said at the beginning of this discussion, positive intent does not always lead to positive results. I just literally said that. It's action. You guys, you know, again, you're sitting here watching these YouTube, you think you're doing the right thing, but literally you're just being brainwashed even more. So you think you're taking a positive action, but you're not because you're not taking your power back. You're giving your power away to these talking heads on YouTube. I don't want your power. I have my own power. I, what I want for you, I want you to find your own power. I want you to understand that you don't have to follow a leader. Following a leader is negative. Be your own leader. Leader, Let's all work together. Nonetheless, many of the qualities you possess as a collective humanity are the result of genetic gifting. And might I add that some of your conflicts are compound not only by history, but by the predominant ailing genetic lines that different areas of the world express. I, I've said that many times. Different races. It's not You're not black because your ancestors are from Africa. I'm not white because my ancestors are from Europe. If you're still believing that, that's some of your programming. I'm white because predominantly my DNA is Lyran, Octarian, Kentuckian, etc. If you're black, you probably have a lot of Syrian in you. And each race, each galactic origin carries specific gifts we got to learn how to work together, literally work together, because we have all this genetic information in our DNA anyway. The 10 missing tribes of Israel are your 10 DNA strands that are inactive. That fake science calls junk DNA. It's not junk. It's not junk. It's your heritage, your galactic being. The difficulty is where you go from here for each one of the genetic lines. Humanity is considered to be in the view of some as one whole, but in point of fact, you have conflicting fractions, not just at the level of culture, religions, and political differences, but literally you have genetically opposed positions. Yes. All right, you guys, before we carry on with our reading from Sunat Kumar, I just wanted to take this moment to talk about our sponsor, ASEA. As you guys know, I have been on ASEA for a while now, and I freaking love it. It has literally changed my life. As we saw in the Acturian anthology, in one of the very first opening chapters, Tom Kenyon talks about being transported into one of the Acturian uh, ships where he's given a liquid to drink to help him maintain his vibratory response to be able to hang with the Octarians, which I firmly believe is a SIA. I firmly believe that this product, in my opinion, was channeled to the founder of ASEA through alien technology. Now, as you guys know, there is not only the liquid and the gel that I love, but there's also the Renew Advanced Skin Care System that I have actually just ordered. I cannot wait to get that in. Now, ASEA has a new product that they have just come out with. This is the Redox Clay Mask. I just ordered myself the mask this morning. I cannot wait to try it out. You guys, if you've watched a lot of my vlogs, you know that I love I love mask. Um, I have very dry skin, and so as I get older, the drier my skin gets, the more older I feel like I look. And so having this Redox 
uh, clay mask. I can't wait to try it to see what type of effects it has on my skin as I get into my 40s. Now the basis of ASEA is something called Redox and this is in the liquid form, the gel, the face wash, as well as this clay mask. So what Redox basically is, I'm not a scientist, so if I can understand this, hopefully everybody can. As you get older, your cells, uh, your cells in your body have a hard time communicating with each other in order to repair. That's why kids, when little kids get into accidents or get sick, they usually pr are on the mend pretty quickly because they have a good redox system. But after we get older and we our body starts to age, our cellular communication between our cells starts to diminish. And what what is the good? What's it's like having a cell phone. Like it's no use having a cell phone, a smartphone like I have here, an iPhone, if I have no cellular signal, right? If I don't have signal, I can't use my smartphone. We have these amazing bodies that can do all these amazing things, but as we get older, that signal seems to kind of like diminish. And that's ultimately what leads to our death, right? So what the ISEA is doing is basically bringing the signal system back to your cellular body to help your body regenerate faster and communicate faster as you age. So basically at 40, I feel like I'm back in my 20s. And as far as vibrationally and spiritually, I, again, believe that this is a product that has been channeled from an off-world or civilization. This is going to help your vibratory response move through these changes that we're going through with our Earth as our Earth does move from third density to fourth density. And I mean, vanity or no, we all want to look cute doing it, right? So I'm really excited about getting this clay mask. I can't wait to get the whole face system in. It should be in by this weekend for me. So I'm super, super, super excited. So go ahead. Uh, the website, the link to the website is down in the description box below. If you do have any questions, sometimes this website is a little bit hard to work. If you do have some questions and you need assistance, which I would highly suggest doing if you need somebody to walk you through all these products or give you options to get these products at wholesale prices, you can check text J from Spiritually Raw. His phone number is down in the description box below. Just text Text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce, B-R-I-C-E, Info to 321-216-8047. And Jay will get back to you really quickly to help walk you through all these products and what is best for you and your life. All right, you guys. Now we're looking at Sunat Kumar's The Potential of This Time. The harmonization of humanity through the homogenization of human humankind is not very a very resourceful way of dealing with this challenge, the challenge of planetary conflict. It would be far better in the best interest of humankind if the truth about alien intervention, intergalactic civilizations were fully revealed. I agree. I just, you know, we know the Christians are so, I mean, you know, the the controllers you use mind control. So like the religion of the left is science. The religion of the right is Christianity. So like the left, they can't possibly conceive of, of a world where the science, the Darwinian matrix, Rockefeller science they've been taught in schools isn't accurate. That's their science. That's their religion, right? Same thing with the Christians on our side. They cannot, they are, in both cases, both the left and the right with their religious beliefs of science or Christianity are very um, entitled, very narcissistic in their um, belief that their way is the only way and the Christians are bad about this. They are really, really, really are nasty when it comes to other belief systems, just like the people on the left are nasty when you challenge their idea of science, right? It's the same mind control happening, different products, but same exact mind control and delusional thinking happening. And it's funny, like with, I mean, I'm laughing at the science, but the Christians, I mean, listen, out of all the religions in the world, your religious book, your Bible has a copyright on it. So it means literally it has a copyright on it, which means it wasn't written by God. L literally, that's what that's what it means. It's got a copyright on it. None of the other religious texts have copyrights on them, but the Bible does because it was written by the same people who created the fake science, right? So they're doing this intentionally to mind control you. But I think too, with this idea of the intergalactic beings, you know, we see the cult of academia. We see how there's, this, there's an academic cult 
just like there's a Christian cult, there's an academic cult. And when they get challenged, when their belief system gets challenged, ooh, it's going to be bad. Just like when the Christians, I mean, when the Christians get challenged, they just send you death threats. Like I've got a whole email full of death threats from Christians. Atheists never send me death threats, but Christians do. So you're going to see a huge temper tantrum. The Christians and the scientists are going to be throwing some major temper tantrums when all of this is revealed. So let me read that again. It will be far better in the best interest of humankind if the truth about alien interventions and intergalactic civilizations were fully revealed. If humanity understood its intergalactic origins and the differences in cultures that were dictated not just through history, but through the alien genetic roots of those cultures, humanity would be in a better position. The intelligent solution under these circumstances is full disclosure. Protecting humanity from the truth of its cosmic origins is non-resourceful. Those individuals discouraged by the lack of world peace would better serve themselves if they look more closely at the differences between people and their cultures. The truth of the situation is that resolution of planetary conflict would be better realized if all parties involved understood their particular intergalactic origins. Yes. The current conflict between the West and the Middle East are not just a conflict of culture, perspectives, language, values, and religions. In some ways, the intergalactic roots, the genetic roots of these two cultures are at odds. Recognition of this reality will allow a more intelligent resolution to arise. Well, that's what happens when we get to fourth density anyway. Pretending that fundamental differences do not exist is not a solution, but as I said earlier, we have Turians are intrigued by dichotomies and opposing forces do not deter us. Rather, it is a synthesis of opposing forces that often leads to a creative solution. And this applies to your planetary predicament as well when it comes to cultural conflicts. There are many opportunities for the advancement of humanity that exist at this unique point in planetary history. Part of this has to do with cosmic energies that are affecting your own DNA, as well as psycho-neurological processes. Part of this is due to the sun's activity, the anomalies of magnetisms, and its interactions with your Earth's mag magnetos magnetosphere. Furthermore, Energies arising from the center of your galaxy are activating new potentials. All of this is cosmically timed by the mechanisms of the cosmos, not by any external force or intelligence. Another reason for this opportunity for humanity to evolve has to do with the unique situation regarding intergalactic contact. As a result of the changes in your sun and the advance in your technology that will allow you to change your own genetics and to explore other planets, from the standpoint of intergalactic understanding, your species is at the threshold of a historic renaissance or a catastrophe. As a result of all of this, your current situation is of, is of great interest to many intergalactic intelligences and your solar system is quite crowded with visitors. We know this. They're having a, um, apparently they're tailgating while they watch us do this. It is yet to be seen if the truth of your intergalactic alien roots will become a part of the consensus reality or not. The forces of control and manipulation do not wish this information to become widely accepted. They believe this knowledge would undermine their power and cause the collapse of their institution since history would need to be rewritten 100%. But whether your world community accepts this truth or not, you can verify it for yourself through logical deduction and a closer look at, at the lies and contradictions of your religions. And for those of your adventurous and for those of you adventurous enough to do so, direct contact with intergalactic beings. Earlier in this discussion, I presented a simple method for making contact with other galactic and intergalactic intelligences through the meditative state of mind. I would like to now expand this simple method so that those of you prepared for such perceptions can begin the adventure of recognizing your off-planet visitors. But first, a few words of caution are in order. As I said earlier, galactic and intergalactic beings are a mix. Some of them are benevolent, some of them are not. Some of them are extremely intelligent and some of them are not. Your solar system and space around your Earth's cornucopia a plethora of these visitors. It is a mixed bag, as you say. Your task, if you choose to open the window of your perceptions, is to separate the benevolent from the malevolent and from the intelligent from the inane. 
The first caution is a redundancy. I mentioned it earlier, but it bears repeating. If you make contact with an off-planet intelligence and it tells you that you must do something, then have nothing to do with that being. If a being tells you that the picture they are presenting is the full and complete truth, doubt its ferocity. And I have said the same thing. How do you know you're channeling good beings or bad beings? Well, the good beings that I talk to, like Magdalene, never tell me to hurt anybody else. They never, they always say things are my choice. Even when leaving the food out for them, the fruits and vegetables, they say only if you can afford it, only if this is something you can do. Be careful to avoid the human trap of worshiping any of these beings because you perceive them to be higher than you. Such perceptions are simply due to the perceptual distortions that occur when viewing higher dimensional realities from a lower dimensional space. What I mean by this is that you may perceive yourself solely as a three-dimensional being. And if this is the case, a being from a fifth dimension or higher would seem to possess magical abilities and supernatural powers. But such a conclusion would be erroneous in such cases. It is a technology possessed by these higher dimensional beings that results in per perceptual distortions on your part. A clear night sky is the best situation to begin direct perception of off-planet beings and their vessels. The method is similar in the beginning stages as to what I presented earlier for making contact during meditative states of mind. In this case, I suggest you stare at a star for, of your choice. The star you, cho you choose will most likely be connected to a genetic line that is within you. But whether this is the case or not, this is a good way to start. With your eyes open, you gaze into space, focus on the star, and then you begin to notice the gaps between your inhales and your exhales. In this case, however, you do not close your eyes. Continue to look at the star. As the gap between your inhales and your exhales gets longer, your breath will get more shallow. You will enter a mental state more receptive to alternative perceptions. Now you are ready to shift the focus of your attention to your pineal gland in the center of your head. Continue focusing on the gaps between the breath and the star you are gazing at while your center of attention is at the center of your head. You then simply send the intention out into the space in front of you that you are ready to make contact and to see your off-planet visitors. If you work with this simple method long enough, you will begin to actually see things in the heavens that you did not see before. You will dehypnotize yourself and see through the planetary shroud into a far more complex and rich universe that you ever imagined existed. I will simply caution you again. Beings from other dimensional realities may seem like gods possessing supernatural powers and be warned. Some off-planet intelligence enjoy being worshipped. These beings are not worth dealing with. Do not fall prey to the temptation to worship and do not think that they have come to rescue you. More often than not, they have traveled so far to view what is unfolding simply out of curiosity. Be prepared for an extraordinary display before your eyes when you pull back the veils. This pulling back of veils is simply a habit of perception reinforced by cultural constraints. When you move past these cultural constraints, you will have lifted that veil.